let's talk a little bit about your personal architecture. Um, seven times in the Scripture, it declares that ye are the temple of God. Now, that might be just a broad brush idiomatic use. That's possible. But when you see it seven times, that's something else again. Paul uses it in Corinthians, first and second Corinthians, Ephesians, Hebrews, and now Peter also uses it twice. It's my belief, and this was discovered by my wife, and as she got into this, it's been the cornerstone of a trilogy of books on the subject that had gone into their uh, 15th or 20th printing, and I've lost track. Um, but it was her discovery of this, and uh, as the more I got into it, I think she's right on the money here in terms of perception. We use the term heart, soul, spirit, and mind loosely. I love you with all my heart. What do I really mean? Well, it's pretty, it's pretty fuzzy. And we use these terms very sloppily. She spent tw over 20 years finding each word in the Greek and the Hebrew, every occurrence in the entire Bible, and from that, inferring what they really refer to. And there were a lot of surprises that came out of that study. From, let's talk a little bit about system architecture of a computer, if I may. And down in the side of the computer, there's probably a master software kernel, a proprietary set of equations, whatever, that you wrap some system resources around, and that's the core of your computer software. Now, you put that software inside an application interface so it has a certain expected appearance to the person that's going to be using it. You take that application interface, and it might like Word, Excel, or PowerPoint, whatever, and you put that inside a user interface, and th that can be different kinds, like XP or Vista or one of those. And the user interface is then put inside a hardware environment, and that also can be any, of, any manufacturer. The great breakthrough that occurred in the 50s was when computer software became machine independent by a number of techniques, so that you could write programs that would run on any computer if they had the right facilitations. But I want you to be sensitive to this architecture, how you have, a, 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 it's a series of concentric uh, circles, so to speak. See, now, the problem that I have right now tonight, as I look out at, on you, I can't see you. I can see the hardware that your software is residing in. The real you is software, not hardware. And it's resident in a hardware environment. Software has no mass. Some of our hardware environments have too much mass. I understand that. Okay. But let's talk a little about it. See, the, when I speak of a computer hardware, I'm talking about microcircuits, memory, wires, all those parts. That's the physical hardware. And if I lay my computer in front of you, can you tell me anything about its behavior? No, you have to know what software it's running, you see. Because inside that, the hardware is simply a residence for software. If I tell you what kind of user interface, internal interface, what kind of machine language, algorithm, whatever, I can talk about the software, but that has no physical reality. It's information. It has no substance. Well, when I look at you, you see, I see your physical body, your flesh, your bones, your circulatory system, whatever, okay? That's analogous to the hardware. When I talk about you, the real you, whether I call it soul or spirit or mind or your thoughts, whatever, whatever vocabulary, I mean, that's software, not hardware. Now, why, does it, why am I making this distinction? Because it's a colorful comparison? No, there's some very profound lessons to be drawn from this. But there's something very interesting here you need to understand about computers. A computer is defined as an infinite state machine. It has an infin it, it, its mathematical existence is one of having an infinite number of states. So a programmable computer is an infinite state machine because it can alter its own states. The miracle of the von Neumann architecture is that the computer can not only operate on data, it can operate on programs, and it can change its own programs. And that's a, that's a, 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 something of a whole different thing. And that, an infinite state machine defies external determination of its internal architecture. You can't, if I gave you a computer with software in it, you try to figure out how that software works, it's almost, not quite, but it's almost impossible to infer the architecture of the software from the external behavior of the computer. And the reason I make that point, see, that's the reason we have a software industry. See, you can go to the store and buy some software and use it all you like, but you can't get in there and change it, you see, normally. There's exceptions, but that's, that's, the, the, that's, the, that's what makes the industry possible. 
The frustration of psychology is that it is attempting to determine the internal architecture of man from its external behavior. That's mathematically impossible. It's a contradiction if you understand the information science is involved. So a psychologist is left only with symptoms to deal with, usually guilt of some, in some form. It has no ability to deal with the root cause of that guilt, which is sin. Psychology has no solution for sin. So the math, something else I want you to understand, see the real you is software, not hardware. What else does that mean? If I take a little diskette and I put it on a postal scale, and I'm talking about a blank disc, uh, disc, uh, diskette, and I weigh it, it'll weigh about seven-tenths of an ounce. Now if I spend hundreds of dollars and load that diskette with a million bytes of software, it will still weigh how much? Seven-tenths of an ounce. The point I'm making is the software is information that has no weight of its own. That software I can actually transmit through the air. Software has no mass. I want you to understand what that means. It is massless. The real you has no mass. The real you is software, not hardware. Software has no mass, therefore it can pass through the airwaves, so can you. It is not restricted to our physical time dimension. Time is a physical property. It's a physical dimension. Something that has no mass has no time. You are eternal because you're software, not hardware. You are eternal whether you're saved or not. You're still software. You're still outside time. The question you don't know the answer to is whether you're saved. Where are you going to spend it? If you're perfect, you can, stay, be, you can remain in the presence of the Creator Himself. If you're not perfect, well, you'll be separated forever. Forever is a long time. Unless you're in Christ, of course. Thank you.